Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about our beautiful moon. Okay, for some reason something just collided to it, and it seems like our moon is experiencing a bit of a bombardment. But this is not what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're going to find out what would happen to our moon had it actually been made of another material, starting with, well, let's just say water. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And so I somehow managed to destroy the moon, it's completely molten and is basically destroyed now. I didn't really want to start the video with that. We're going to go back in time now, when the moon was still just fine. As a matter of fact, our moon did experience something like this uh, several billion years ago. This was known as the Late Heavy Bombardment, and this is what created um, a lot of craters on the surface of our beautiful neighbor, the moon. Now today we're going to start by changing its composition and we're going to discover what would actually happen to this beautiful um, object if it was made of, well, let's just say water, let's say ice. What if mo the moon was made completely out of ice? So we're going to actually create a, a very small miniature solar system. We're going to go ahead and place the sun right here in the middle and then uh, we're going to take planet Earth and place it at a distance of about one astronomical unit away from the sun. We're around here somewhere, a little bit, a little bit farther than it should be, but that's okay. And now let's go into the settings for the Earth and place the moon. So we now have an object, the moon orbiting around Earth. So why did I do this? Well, because I actually want to d find out what kind of effects the moon will receive both from the sun and from our planet Earth if it's made of something completely different. Before we talk about uh, the actual composition, let's briefly talk about what we know the moon is made of right now. All of the stuff on the surface is actually, um, it's essentially rock. It's known as the lunar uh, regolith, or basically lunar rock, and it's usually about 60 kilometers um, thick, more or less uh, on average. Uh, it's a little bit thicker in places where there are no craters, it's a little bit thinner, up to about 3 kilometers in places where there are craters. And it's essentially made of things like um, basaltic rocks, uh, something known as anorthosites, and it's essentially very, very similar in composition to the rocks on Earth. As a matter of fact, this is the reason why we now are absolutely certain that Earth and Moon were created from the same object uh, that received a collision something like 4.5 billion years ago. Uh, so, the inside of the Moon, though, is a little bit different. Inside here we have um, something similar to Earth. This is also known as the... Uh, solid lithosphere, basically solid rock right here on the inside, and this is very, very similar to um, to Earth mantle, basically it's kind of same kind of a hard material, but then on the inside we have um, a slightly partially molten part right here that is very likely also made up of uh, rock but is nearly not as big as it is on Earth. On Earth, this part is really, really huge, whereas on, um, on the Moon it's very tiny. And then, in the middle, we have um, an iron-rich core, which is probably only about a few hundred kilometers across. And this is at the depth of about um, 1,300 to maybe 1,700 kilometers. So, all in all, the Moon is very, very similar in composition to our planet Earth that you see right there, but it has a lot less iron and a lot less molten material on the inside. And uh, the rocks overall are quite similar in composition, but there's definitely um, proportionally more rock stuff than there is metal stuff. And this is one of the reasons why the moon also has um, much less density than our planet Earth. The density on the moon is 3.34 grams per centimeter cube, whereas on Earth, it's close to about 5.51. So this is about 60% density of Earth, but it is still a very dense object. This is the second densest moon in our solar system after Io. The density of Io, which is the uh, moon of Jupiter, about the same size as our own moon, is just slightly higher than, than the density of our moon. So, in these terms, our moon is actually very unique. 
But this is because it's made out of rock and iron. There is practically no water here. Maybe there was water a long time ago, but at this point there is nothing left and we'll talk about why there is no more water in one of the future videos. But right now, we're going to just go into the slider and change Moon into an ice ball right away. And you'll notice that there is a stream um, of water essentially that was just sort of um, protruding from the back of the moon. And this is uh, essentially the effects of the sun. The solar radiation is so strong and uh, the fact that the moon has no magnetosphere and nothing to protect it from the sun um, really makes it kind of hard for the moon not to lose material at all times. As a matter of fact, if I go into the mass loss here, the moon is currently losing a huge amount of mass. In terms of um, kilograms, it's a huge amount. It's like 1.5 times 10 to the power of 10 kilograms, but you can also convert this to like, uh, let's say, moon's masses. So it loses about one ten thousandth of percent of its own mass every single year. This may not seem like a lot, but it means that it, uh, this object would actually shrink quite dramatically within the next um, million years. As a matter of fact, within the next million years, um, this moon would actually lose five masses of the moon. It would be gone completely. In other words, um, in 100,000 years, it would lose about 5% of its own mass, which is quite a large amount. And this is because we're now made of, um, of water, we have no magnetosphere to protect us, and you'll notice that it's actually not liquid water. And I'll explain to you in a second why not, and you probably can guess why not. But um, the solar radiation here is now breaking apart the water molecules on the surface and are cr essentially creating two, um, two materials, hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is very light. Moon has almost 17% uh, of the gravity on Earth. So because of that, hydrogen escapes into the outer solar system right away. Oxygen is a little bit heavier and might actually combine with some of the other materials on the surface, but usually will also escape as well. And so there's practically nothing that's left. The water molecules break down and the hydrogen and oxygen separate and escape into the outer solar system. And because of this, this is why the moon is losing so much stuff uh, so quickly. I can actually accelerate time here and you'll see that this stream increases quite dramatically. It basically, it almost looks like a comet. Now, many of these particles will actually end up on um, Earth, or may end up on Earth, because Earth will attract many of these articles. Uh, because Earth will actually attract many of these particles and so the oxygen and hydrogen composition on Earth may increase with time as well. But for the moon, this will be a bit of a problem to keep all of these on the surface. Now, why is the water not liquid? Well, one of the reasons is, of course, the temperature. The current surface temperature here is still very, very, very uh, cold. It's minus 158 degrees Celsius. And even if it was warmer, it would still not create liquid water. I mean, I can actually maybe collide something with the moon right now just to kind of create a bit of a liquid water on the surface. But in reality, it would still not be liquid because there is just no air pressure. Uh, there is no pressure to maintain the, the liquidity of water. Without necessary air pressure, um, the water will not be liquid. It will still be a nice form. So right now, because we collided this asteroid, maybe... Nope, still nothing. I may have to collide a lot more, actually. Let's try to do that. Let's collide a few more until we kind of make a bit of a liquid surface here somewhere. And even that is not helping. Even this is not working. Yeah, this is definitely not, gonna, not, not going to do anything. So the liquidity of the moon is quite impossible. If we placed uh, more pressure here and if the temperature increased, making this a more stable system, then we would have a very large liquid bowl. But as of now, this is essentially similar to um, things like Ceres, for example. Ceres, which is, of course, um, an object in the asteroid belt, is uh, one of the dwarf planets, or at least currently it's designated as a dwarf planet, and it actually is composed of a large amount of water. 
and on its surface it basically has a lot of sort of icy stuff and, and it has rocks as well and um, the actual composition of Ceres is something like 66% rock and 33% water. Moon, uh, this moon that we created has a lot more water, but nevertheless it would still look very similar to Ceres. It would just have this very interesting solid uh, surface ice that will often expel both hydrogen and oxygen, but will, that might also have things like um, water-based uh, volcanoes, or basically cryovolcanoes, similar to the ones on Europa and on um, moons like uh, Enceladus. And uh, these particular um, geysers, as you, as you would call them, or I guess cryovolcanoes, uh, would actually be quite common here, mostly because there is quite enough um, warmth on the inside and there's a lot of interaction with our own uh, planet Earth. These tidal effects will actually cause the moon to uh, have quite a lot of various geysers, which unfortunately I can't really demonstrate here. Well, and that's essentially kind of what the moon would look like if it was made entirely out of water. Now, let's see if we can maybe just maybe create um, a kind of a water world. Let's see if we increase the atmosphere and give it a bit of a magnetosphere if it changes anything. So I'm going to slow down time here a little bit. We're going to give it um, some surface pressure. We're also going to give it magnetosphere by going right here. And we're, we're going to basically create a bit of a protective surface here and hopefully oh wow this is this gives us a huge greenhouse effect this is a lot higher than i expected okay i need to lower this a little bit so now let's wait and see if this will become some sort of a interesting object well so far nothing but actually as i increase the surface pressure it does seem to change it there you go now this is a sort of a science fiction version of the water moon that's liquid and that has very very high atmospheric pressure that's wow suddenly just escaped into the outer atmosphere this was uh, because the magnetosphere here is unfortunately i guess it's not strong enough to protect the moon from the solar radiation so all of this atmosphere and all of this stuff suddenly escaped making the moon dramatically lighter it actually just literally lost like 87 percent of its mass and now it's back to being a rock because all of the water or most of the water completely escaped or actually no never mind it still has a lot of water but it doesn't look the same way that it used to look a few a uh, few seconds ago well and anyway so that's kind of all i wanted to do in this video i wanted to show you what the moon would look like and what it would be like if it was made entirely out of water and if it actually was much bigger than this of course there you go so this is the water moon right there obviously the collisions that occurred over the billions of years would not appear in the moon it would have very few craters because the water would slowly evaporate and those craters would disappear so the actual surface would look very similar to surfaces of other moons like for example Ganymede or Europa that I'm going to place here just for a comparison. So let's actually just place Ganymede right next to our own moon. Just so you can see. Oh, so that's not Ganymede, that's Europa. Let's let's place Europa right here. Just so you can see how similar in terms of the surface they actually look. So as you can see, there's practically no large craters here. Only tiny ones. And well, anyway, thank you so much for watching. And hopefully you learned something from this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about our own moon about what would happen if it was made out of water and about what would happen if the moon collided with Europa, apparently. That was not actually expected. That happened by accident. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games and uh, likes watching various space and science videos. I'll see you in the next video. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And in the meanwhile, let's accelerate time and let's actually see what happens to our moon after it cools down a little bit more after this major collision. And, whoa, it suddenly decreased in size and became waterless again. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Alright, see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.